In this problem, we have this box and we're applying a force on this box that has some magnitude of P. What we are asked to figure out is if this box has a weight of 100 pounds, what is going to be the smallest magnitude of force P that we can apply to make the box move in some way? So to cause impending motion. And we are told that the coefficient of friction, so this coefficient of friction, static friction, is going to be equal to 0 0.6. So in a problem like this, I always find friction problems are the hardest problems to do because you need to look at the problem setup and you need to sort of visualize what could possibly happen if we apply a force here. So if we apply a force on this box, there are two things that could happen. The first is that the box is going to slip. So slipping occurs and the box is going to move in this direction. The second thing is tipping could occur. So if the box tips, we're gonna apply a force and it might tip over and it sort of is gonna tip about that point right there. So here we'd have some tipping. And we need to check both of these cases. So first thing we do let's draw a free body diagram. So I'll draw the free body diagram over here. On this free body diagram, what do we have? Well, we have the force that's being applied. So we have this force P that's on some angle. We're going to have some normal force and this normal force is going to act some distance X. If this is the center, so this is where the center of mass is and our weight goes through this. Uh, this is going to act some distance X away from the center. And this is my normal force. So if I'm pushing this way, friction is going to oppose my potential motion. So this is my frictional force. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to check that slipping occurs first. So what I need to do is I need to check for slipping. And if I check for slipping, that means my frictional force is going to be equal to this coefficient of static friction times my normal force, which I called N. And this is the case because we're going to say that the impending motion is going to be slipping or is going to occur. So impending motion is going to occur. So when we're checking for this, we use our equilibrium equations. The first thing we're going to do, the sum of the forces in the X are equal to zero. So if I say this is positive, I'm going to have, well, let me write this, this is a P. So I'm going to have P times four over five minus some frictional force. And remember this frictional force right here, we can substitute in mu s times n, and that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, so then we look at the sum of the forces in the y, and this is equal to zero. Sum of the forces in the y, we're going to have p times three over five, this component of that force. Then we're going to have, that's a minus because it's pointing down. We're going to have a minus 100, which is my weight. And we're going to have plus some normal force. And this is equal to zero. So now we have two equations and we have two unknowns. We don't know what N is and we don't know what P is. So we can solve these two equations. So when I solve this equation, let's put this in terms of N. If I say N is equal to three-fifths P, uh, three-fifths will be 0 0.6 P plus 100. I'm now going to put it into this equation over here. So I'm going to have P, uh, this will be 0 0.8, right? Four-fifths is 0 0.8 P minus uh, 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 P plus 
100 is equal to zero. Let me move this down right here. So I'll have, this is uh, 0 0.6 times 0 0.6. Zero point three six, so zero point eight p minus zero point three six p minus point six times one hundred. Sure, I get the right answer. Uh, minus sixty is equal to zero. Okay, now we'll combine the p zero point eight minus zero point. Three six, so zero point four four p is equal to sixty. Sixty divided by point four four is equal to a hundred and thirty six. So p is equal to one hundred and thirty six pounds. All right. So then my normal force is going to be equal to zero point six times one hundred and thirty six plus one hundred times 0 0.6 plus 100. And we get that my, uh, so 181. So this is my normal force, 181 pounds. This is the force that I'm applying to cause impending motion. And now I need to check if this is valid. So to check if this is valid, what I want to do is I want to sum my moments about this point right here. I want to figure out what X is equal to. If X is equal to uh, this length right here is two feet. So if X is going to be equal to either a positive one or a minus one, that means that normal force will be somewhere under this box. So it'll be somewhere over here. If it's more than one, if it's 1 1.5, 2, 3, whatever it is, or negative 1.5, 2, 3, that means this normal force occurs outside of this box right here. And that means that tipping would occur before the box starts to slip. So I need to check this. Uh, so if I sum my moments about, and I'll call this point O, and point O is a good spot because the weight goes through point O, my frictional force goes through point O. So all I have to do is worry about my normal force and my, my applied force. And I'll say this is positive. Okay, so I'm looking over here. So let's just put in the, this is three, four, five. So P is equal to 136. So 136, we'll do the four fifths first. So that's the X component. The X component is right here. So that's going to be the minus, right? It's gonna rotate tail first, minus and the perpendicular distance is three feet. Okay, now we can do the Y component. The Y component is going to be a positive. So the Y component is gonna be plus, keep it one color, uh, plus 136 times three over five times, well, what is this distance right here? That perpendicular distance is just gonna be half of this length. So it's going to be one. Okay, so that's my applied force. And then I'm going to have plus my normal force, which I know is 181. So I can say plus 181 times some distance. And that's that distance X right here. Now, if if I'm wrong on what side that this normal force occurs about 0, 0.0, all we'll have is a minus sign. If I'm right, it will be a positive. So let's solve for X. If I solve for X, I'm going to have minus 136 times four fifths, 0 0.8, times three, plus 136 times 0 0.6 times one. 
move it to the other side of the equation, divide by 181. And I get that this x here is equal to 1.35 feet. And now this tells me this cannot occur. X cannot is, this is greater than one foot. One foot is, if I look at my problem setup, this distance right here is one foot. So my normal force is occurring out here in order for equilibrium to be maintained. So it's not possible. It, it does not slip. So we think it's going to tip. So now we need to check for it to tip. So we'll do the same thing. We need to check. Let's uh, get some room. I'll do it over here. We'll check for tip. Now, if we're going to check for tipping, what we need to do is we need to say, okay, well, this normal force is going to occur right at this point right here. Motion is going to be impending. So in this case, this distance X, X needs to be equal to one. So if X is equal to one, this is my normal force right here. So it hasn't started to tip, but the motion's impending. So if X is equal to one, that's when that condition is true. Let's do the sum of the forces in the X. So the sum of the forces in the X is equal to zero. We're going to have the same thing. We're going to have this equation uh, isn't going to change, except we cannot say that our Frictional force is going to be mu s times n. We're going to have to keep it as a as a con, uh, as an unknown. So we're going to have p times four fifths minus some frictional force, and this is equal to zero. If we sum our forces in the y, this is equal to zero. Let me just get myself a little bit more room. What am I going to have? It's going to be the same thing, minus P times three over five, minus 100 uh, plus N is equal to zero. And then we can sum the moments about some point, we can choose point O. And if we sum our moments about point O, what are we going to get? Well, we know that this X is equal to one, Frictional force goes through it, 100 pounds goes through it. So we're going to have the P force. Uh, let's, let's move this in the middle. So we're going to have minus P times four fifths times three plus P times three fifths times one. So this doesn't change, right? Nothing's changing with this. This is this equation right here, except for instead of 136, we're using P because we haven't figured out that variable yet. And then we're going to have plus whatever this normal force is, plus my normal force times one, because we set, let me erase, let me erase this uh, normal force because we set X equal to one. And this distance right here is equal to one foot. Okay. And this is going to be equal to zero. So now how many unknowns do we have? We don't know what P is, we don't know what N is, and we don't know our frictional forces. We have three equations and we have one unknown, or three unknowns. So we're going to have to solve a system of equations. So the easiest way is to use the sum of the forces in the Y and the sum of the moments about zero is equal to zero. Uh, we only have two equations in two unknowns in those two equations. So this will be minus 0 0.8 times three. So minus 
2.4p plus 0.6p plus n is equal to zero. So we get n is equal to, we can put those two together. Uh, so minus, minus 2.4 times 0.8, Sorry, minus, minus 2.4 plus 0.6. So we get minus 1.8. When we bring it to the other side of the equation, we get 1.8p is equal to n. Okay, now on this equation right here, we'll have minus 0.6p minus 100 plus n. So these two can go to the, uh, well, we get, n is equal to 1.8p. So that's equal to zero. Uh, we get 1.2p is equal to 100. We get p is going to be equal to 100 divided by 1.2. And p is going to be equal to 83 pounds. So here, p is equal to 83.3 pounds. Okay. So now 83.3 pounds, we can figure out what my normal force is. My normal force is going to be 1.8 times this. So my normal force is going to be equal to 1.8 times 83.3. So this is going to be 150 pounds. And then I can figure out what my frictional force is. If I do 83.3 times 0.8, is equal to my frictional force. So my frictional force right here is equal to 66.64 pounds. Now there's a couple of checks I need to do here. Is this frictional force less than my maximum frictional force? I think it is, uh, but 0 0.6 times my normal force, 150. This is my maximum friction force. This is equal to 90. So here, 66.64 is less than 90. So this checks out and if we compare this P right here to this P that we found over here, we would learn that this, this is less. So this occurs first. So it's going to tip before it slips. So hopefully this video has helped you understand how you can approach a friction problem where you're asked to figure out if something is going to tip or if something's going to slip. You need to take into account both of the possibilities. You need to work the problem for both of those possibilities and you have to see which one is going to happen first.